Car Talk is presented by Gates Automotive, Northern Indiana's premier local owned auto dealer, specializing in Toyota, Chevy, and pre-owned vehicle sales and service. Gates Automotive has locations in South Bend, Mishawaka, Granger, and Elkhart. For more information, visit GatesAutomotive.com. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for this episode of Car Talk, where we talk about everything car related from buying to selling, financing and servicing. Today's guest has been with us for several years here at Gates Automotive and he's been a wide variety of roles. He's been a salesperson with us, he's been promoted to finance, he also spent time as a float sales manager between our Mishawaka store in Granger, as well as some time at Elkhart and our Toyota store in South Bend. If you can't find him at one of those stores, Right now, it's because he's actually got another promotion to our Chevy store in Mishawaka. He's now our finance director over there, and if you can't find him there, it's because he spends his time pouring a lot of himself into the team that we have here at Gates Automotive. That's one thing I really like about him is he's a mentor figure to a lot of people. He's had a lot of success, and he wants to be able to pass that on to other people. And it all comes down to putting the customer first. And that's his focus is how can we best serve our customers? I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Mike Clark. Mike, how are you today? I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. You feel good about that intro? Does that sum you up pretty good? Man, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a little bit different sitting here looking at it uh, from an outside perspective and just that everyday, day-to-day -day grind going in and doing it and uh, hearing it, it, it sounds like a lot when it just feels like you don't do enough. So uh, that was pretty awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. And Mike, I do want to thank you for being here today. I know that that kind of takes it out of what your normal schedule looks like. So thank you very much for coming in here and doing this so that we can share your story and sure. tell everybody about what you're doing. Uh, so to start things off, we're going to do a 30 second rundown. What that means is I'm going to throw as many questions at you in 30 seconds and we'll see how many we can get through. All right, let's do it. Cool. Cool. Start the timer in three, two, one. What's your full name? My name is Michael Leandre Clark Jr. Where were you born? I was born in South Bend, Indiana. Where did you grow up? South Bend, Indiana, on the west side of town. Where did you go to high school? I went to Riley for high school. What was your favorite? What was your favorite class in high school? My favorite class was actually social studies. Great. What did you do after high school? Uh, after high school, I jumped right into uh, work. I jumped right into the workforce here at Gates at 18 years old. That's great. What was your first role with Gates? Uh, my first role was a sales professional. Perfect. How many kids do you have? Four. Uh, what are their ages? Fourteen. 13, 8, and 7. Perfect. We just uh, ran out of time, but we got a few more questions we're just going to run through. What sports are your kids in? What do they play? Uh, my oldest boy, he plays a lot of soccer. Uh, he plays for Junior Irish right now. He's on the traveling league, does pretty well there. Uh, he is in eighth grade going into his freshman year next year, hopefully at St. Joe, looking to play there. My second boy, he plays basketball. Uh, well, actually, he's transitioning into football now, and that's his thing. Uh, my, sec my oldest daughter, she actually does swim, and she's a Girl Scout. And then my youngest, she's in a dance class. How many roles have you had here at Gates? Uh, Role-wise, I guess we can say that uh, I was a sales professional. That's one. I uh, transitioned to that. I became a finance producer after about two and a half years, three and a half years of selling cars. I did that for about three and a half years. Then I became the finance pivot uh, which that is the assistant director in finance, and that's just kind of help overseeing the department. And then from there, I'm transitioned into kind of a float manager role where I just kind of went around, like you stated earlier, and did uh, filling in roles, help with sales desk, uh, whether it's different finance director spots or filling in producer roles. I did that for a while, and now I am actively the finance director at Gates Chevy in Mishawaka. Great, and a lot of a lot of reasons why you've been promoted is because of how much you're pouring into your team. And I think you really understand that it's not just you, it's that it's your whole team. Yes. And what can you do to help make your team successful? That's really apparent in not just how you handle yourself and handle your team that you have now, but also how you help pour into other people that aren't on your team. Um, other sales professionals at Chevy, at Toyota, at Granger, at Elkhart, that's been very clear. And you've done an awesome job at that. I got one more question for you. And how many years have you been at Gates? How many years ago did you start at Gates? Well, I started in 2010. In October of 2010, I started at Gates as a salesman at Mishawaka. So I guess you round that up about going on my 12th year. Awesome. <laughs> 12 years. Did yeah. you think 12 years ago at the ripe age 18 that you'd be here today? Uh, never in a million years. 
Uh, you come in and you see these guys in fancy suits and they're flashy, and the, but they're well put together. Yeah. And once you learn that all the different walks of life that they come from, from, uh, you know, Michigan alumni to people that went to Notre Dame or teachers or people just, uh, I know people that were educators in the school that came and do this. And it's an amazing industry and I love it. Great. Perfect. So let's talk about your history with Gates. Um, when you started in sales, what was it that you drew you to Gates? Why did you start here? Well, that kind of goes back a little bit. Um, when I was in high school, I was in this club called Fineo, which is failure not, is not an option out of Riley High School. And uh, they had a mentor come in one time and speak. And there was this gentleman came in, and he was, uh, his name is Perry Watson. He owned, he owned Lexus of Mishawaka. And uh, he came in, and he intrigued me. Never seen a gentleman like that before coming from uh, South Bend. He was interesting. He was well put together, dressed nice, spoke well. Uh, so I was interested in what he did, and I asked. And he said that he owned a car dealership. So from the ripe age of 15, it always kind of piqued my interest. And right when I turned 18, uh, I left for a year, and I went to Arkansas. My mother shipped me down there. And when I got back after having my uh, my sons, I had them at a young age, uh, I was kind of working non and dead end jobs. I actually started at a factory and I always knew I wanted more. And uh, my sister one day was like, hey, I know this gentleman. And actually, he's one of my best friends now. His name is Brian Winston. She took me downtown South Bend, this little lot down there, and introduced me to this man. And I went down there and I talked to him and he picked my brain for a little bit, asked me what I wanted and told him. And my answer's always been the same. And that's just to be successful. And that means a lot of different things to me. True. It isn't that. I'm looking for fame or fortune. It's just to be content in life and make sure that I build something in generationally for my, you know, for my family and people behind me. Uh, after talking with Brian Winston, he shook my hand and, and told me to go to Gate Chevy and meet the general manager. And at 18 years old, I was a little confused. <laughs> but uh, that all being said, I went and I shook this man's hand. His name was Clint. I talked to Clint for uh, just a little bit, and it's funny because earlier this week I had a conversation with Clint about the first time I met him. And at the time, uh, I was young, 18, I had a little bit of a longer beard. And Clint's a pretty clean-cut guy, as you know. Uh, the only time I've ever seen him with a mustache was this time. I remember sitting down and shaking his hand. He interviewed me, uh, asked me what I was about, told me the same thing. And then uh, he shook my hand and gave me a Joe Verde video to watch. And uh, he said, you know what? This was a Thursday. He said, you start Monday. Wow. And I started the business that Monday, and I haven't looked back since. That's awesome. Uh, you named a few people that we just want to do a quick shout out to. Brian Winston. He's the used car manager here at Toyota. And then also Clint Emberton. He's the general sales manager that oversees all the locations. So huge shout out to them. If uh, I, I might be stepping out of this, but I'll speak for you. I, I would say that if maybe they weren't involved in that, then maybe you wouldn't be here today. I you might be somewhere else. I would venture to say that I probably wouldn't. Uh, seeing those two guys and the way uh, that they carried this stuff, and they seen something me, in me at the time that I didn't see in myself. And That's it's awesome. been many times that that was the case, that they've helped me springboard into where I am right now. That is awesome to hear. It's, it's cool to see how you know it's not just about you. You know it's about your kids. You know it's about the community. You know it's the generations that come behind you. And Gates has done a good job of kind of paving the road up till now. And you're one of the people that are in place that are able to help see the future and help pave that road to continue it on. That's what I, that's what I love about you, Mike, is you're so willing to pour into people and to give them sound mentor, mentoring advice to help them be uh, successful in whatever venue that they view that it's not about money it's not about selling cars it's about helping people yeah absolutely and that that's the one thing about this business that has kept me interested more than anything is that nothing's ever the same and the people that you meet and the relationships that you get to build are what really build this entire business and that's what gates is about i mean being here 90 plus years uh the mantra's always been you know our customers our family treat everybody like that and that is exactly what I see in the way I want to do business and conduct business going forward. Because this isn't just a job to me. This is my career. This is my lifestyle. I love to be able to go out in the community and be able to shake people's hands and know that I'm the Gates guy. I'm the car guy. I'm that person. That's awesome. 
if there was someone that's starting in the car business or maybe just starting their very first job somewhere, not even related to cars, what kind of advice would you give them? The, the best advice I can give anybody, and this is something that I heard very, very young, is that you have two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. Too often we get in this business and people want to uh, know everything instead of being a student of the game and, and educating yourself on it and understand that it is about the people. It's listening to the customer. It's listening to our clients and understanding what they want and their needs, but helping them in the future. Because a lot of time it just takes some direction and being a professional allows you to do that. It's understanding and, and diving into those small things and knowing how to put them on the track to accomplish their goals and help them in the future. Because this isn't a one-time deal. This is the next car and the next car and their family's car and on for them. What I love about Gates is what you just said is it's not about the one car deal. It's about that ongoing relationship, whether it's sales or service. And you, you can't just look at it as selling someone a car today. Yeah. It's got to be the next car. It's got to be their kid's car. It's got to be their grandparents' car. It's got to be all those different things that you're looking for in the future that make today worthwhile. It's, it's going through and putting all this effort in now that's going to eventually pay off in the future. Exactly. We've got a workshop that we do with our sales staff. We do that every Monday morning. You're involved in a lot of those. Why do we do that? Why do we do that workshop? Well, the reason we do the workshop is to make sure that we give all of our employees the right opportunities and all the tools to succeed, right? It's the behind the scenes things that no one sees that, go in, that goes into the work. It's to come in and early and stay in late. It's the making sure that we have all the tools in front of us to help our people succeed but also take care of our customers, more importantly. Be able to answer all the questions. Be able to make sure that we're there and to be good stewards to the customer and of the company. Because you need all the tools and you need to know how to use it and take advantage of a situation when it's in front of you and make sure that you seize an opportunity. So we will always try to pour into our guys and make sure that their tools are just sharp. And that's what the workshop's about, is to make sure that you can get out whatever you want. And there's a lot of good stuff that comes from it. Right. It's not only myself. There's a lot of good leaders in, within the company. From Drew Dixon, who's one of the best sales managers we have. Brian Winston, sometimes Chris Emberton. I mean, a lot of our guys come in. Greg Wolf, uh, Ralph Caratour. There's a lot of guys that come in and give a lot of that. And just in leadership roles back to just the beginning stages of the car business. And teaching them how to go through a car deal and actually turn this into a business that they can do for themselves. Great. There's other people that have named you by name that have said that you are a mentor figure in their life. And maybe... They even pictured you as competition at one time. <laughs> and we're talking about Glenn Walton. <laughs> so Glenn was on our last episode, and he named you by name and said that you were one that really pushed him to succeed, especially at the beginning. And he gave you a huge shout-out there. Uh, there was a lot of great things he said about you oh. that really kept him uh, with his nose to the grindstone, but it was really because he wanted to compete with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I look forward to hearing that. <laughs> the, the one thing that I'll say to that is I, I, very, I very much appreciate it, but uh, yeah. he doesn't know how much he did that for me. True. Uh, Glenn came in at a time where I was stagnant. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, the big picture and all I could do. And then there's this guy that comes in that didn't know anything about this business. And I kind of <laughs> helped him show him the ropes a little bit. And I just see him take off like a rocket ship. Yeah. And I didn't understand why he was so different than me. In my mind, I'm looking at this guy like, well, I just showed you just the basics and the framework of it. Yeah. And he just took off and turned it into something I didn't even see. Isn't that amazing? It is. He peeled my eyes back. So from there, it became this friendly, I don't want to say competition, but just, just this back and forth where we push each other. So he pushes me in that same way. And I'm glad that I can be that because in a lot of, way, he, a lot of ways, he does that for me too. True. He's really a guy that uh, I look up to to see the type of motor that he has. He's unstoppable when he does things that people don't even think of it. I mean, 326 or 36 cars, whatever. 331 and a half. 331 Isn't that crazy? And a half. I mean. <laughs> I, and 50 and a half in March. 50 and a half in March. 11 and a half years in this business, and I've never seen it. So not, uh, I, I definitely tip my hat to him, and he deserves his flowers because he's done a lot of things in his lane. Shout and out to Glenn. Yeah, shout out to Glenn for sure. And that's one thing that I want to do for sure is give him his flowers because he deserves that. And I appreciate him doing that in his lane. I mean, that's one thing that's great about this company is that they allow people to have so many different lanes, their own lanes. I'm able to do that with the business department and the finance. I'm able to uh, give my spin on that, but also have a great group of, group of guys around me that allows me to be creative, 
and pushed me to do that too. And so does Glenn. So that's awesome. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give to someone that's shopping for a new car right now that maybe they don't know what the new car inventory looks like? My, for, for example, my neighbor texted me yesterday looking for a trailblazer and he, he sent me a window sticker and he said, Hey, here's one you have. Um, and I knew differently. Here's one you guys have. Uh, when can we come by it? And what most people don't realize is not only is our inventory short, but the vehicles that we do have and the vehicles that are listed that get listed automatically mm-hmm. are sold so deep already. And even the Trailblazer, that the production on that has been suspended for a few weeks, if not a month or two. It has. Uh, I would say that first and foremost, come to Gates. Uh, give us an opportunity. First off, start at Gates. <laughs> start, start at Gates. Number one. <laughs> if you're in the market for a new Chevrolet or Toyota, stop at Gates and give yeah. us an opportunity and see why we've been in business 90 plus years. That's right. See why uh, we're family family owned and operated to this day. We're not ran by a corporation and that at any given time you can walk in and see somebody at ownership level or the executive team or even down to, you know, our sales managers or sales professionals that try to make sure that we stay within this community. But overall, when it comes to a new car, the one thing that I'll say is that if you're shopping for it, the best information you can get is from the dealership. Now, of course, you can go online and do some things and find some things out. But if you come in, we'll set you up with a realistic time frame, but also we'll keep in touch with you. You have that personal touch. So it isn't just feeling like you're clicking on a screen or you're not understanding what's going on. There's a personal touch that goes along with it step by step that will guide you through the entire process and show you the way and find out again what your needs and wants are and figure out how to help you accomplish them. Yeah. And not not only that, people buy cars from people. Yeah. And it's not like they can just, they can go on a computer and do that. But there's so much more depth that it takes sometimes to purchase a vehicle. And that's what we provide at Gates. I think that's what makes us different. Gates has been here for over 90 years for a reason. It's because we take care of our customers. It's because we continue to grow that. We pour into our staff so they can continue to pour into our customers. They've done an awesome job at that. A few people you mentioned, well, I guess you didn't mention by name, but we'll go through and point them out real fast. Matt Helmkamp at Chevy. Joel Gates at Toyota, Jeff Gates at the Elkhart location. They've done an awesome job at setting that up for success, not just so that it's around for for them, but for their kids and their kids' kids and those generations to come. They've done an awesome job at that. They have, and not, not only do they set it up for their generations, they set it up for ours too. You're right. There's plenty, there's plenty of people that work within this company that are second or third generations that actually made a career out of this. That's true. And, and that's the amazing thing about having that type of foundation. And that's one thing we do that with our community. And there is no secret to it. There's not a secret sauce. It's just people taking care of people, like you said earlier. And the best, again, the best way to come in is to come in and be a part of it. Come in and see what we can do for you. Now, again, every dealership's not for everybody, but in the same sense too, the opportunity, all we ask for is that. So if you come in and just see what we can do for you, I think a lot of people will be surprised because there's a, there's a stigma that goes along with going into a car dealership, especially in this day and age with paranoia and, you know, I'm going to say the word, but the COVID, right? Yeah, that's right. COVID's created a lot of things. But the one thing that Gates hasn't lost is being in touch with our community and our people. Mike, you're finance director at Gates Chevy World of Mishawaka, and that's a role you've taken on this year. Why do you think that, in general, people hate the finance department? I know, pretty tough question. <laughs> Why do you think people hate the finance department? Well, I think that people get a very mis- misconception of what the finance process is. True. And the reason I say that is a lot of times people think that you come in and things move too fast and people talk quick. But a lot of times what needs to happen and what happens at Gates is that we slow down and we do a very fine tooth process with our customers. Exactly. And it's thorough. It is very thorough. We want to understand exactly what your financial needs are. We want to break that down and make sure that we tailor whatever financial program to you is suited for you. So we want to make sure that we understand what you want to accomplish. We want to help you accomplish that. And overall, set you up again for the future, whether that's local lenders or national lenders. We want to make sure that we're competitive in every market. We deal with over 23 different lenders. Wow. And um, we try to build the best relationships, not only with our lenders, but with our customers. Because the one thing is we don't work for the banks. Yeah. We work for the customers and the banks work for us. That's right. So we want to make sure that we always give that to every customer and and explain everything in depth. That way you make sure that you are taken care of. Exactly. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. They, they just see the finance department like it's some extra cost to them, but it's not. It's the exact opposite. Yes. And we're able to make the banks, once we understand the customer, we make the bank work for that customer. 
not yes. the other way around. Yes, sir. That way we're able to get better rates, better options. An example, one one of the big lenders here locally is TCU. Correct. If someone walks into TCU to get a car loan the direct way, their rate is going to be higher than if they come to us. This is correct. And that happens a lot with these lenders. It does, because when building a relationship and building something with with the dealership, we offer them a lot of business to the bank. But volume, yeah, exactly. Volume, that is the right word. That all being said, the customer gets to take advantage of us doing that. So we're, we are a direct lender for the customer. So they actually give you a preferred rate. So if you walk into TCU, like you said, TCU say, hey, if you actually go to Gates, they'll give you a better rate than we can give you with the, here within uh, the bank. Yeah, exactly. So like with TCU, uh, they will give us better rates than what they'll give to their own customers. So that same customer walking into Gates can get a better interest rate than if they go straight to TCU. Yes, sir. And that's the amazing thing because TCU, if you walk into TCU, it, it's having a direct relationship with the lenders locally. And TCU being one of the local credit unions, they tell their members, they say, hey, you come in, you apply for a loan. If you go to Gates, they'll actually give you a better deal than you can get within the credit union here. Reason being is that we are that direct lender between the customers. And things. So they give us the best rates to make sure that we're able to give that to the customer and supply a better experience. One of the things we're doing here in the short future is breaking ground on our new Chevy store in South Bend, yes. which is a pretty huge accomplishment. For some people that don't know, Gates Chevy World actually used to be in South Bend, and we moved that out to one of our satellite stores in Mishawaka when GM went through some downsizing in 2007, 2008. So it's really cool to see that we're bringing Chevy back to South Bend. Uh, that store's going to be a huge step in the right direction towards yeah. that. Uh, what kind of thoughts do you have about the new store opening up? I'm excited. I think it's going to be healthy for this community, and especially on the south side of town. Here. Exactly. It's something that's been missing from this side of town, and you can see that just the community's been rebuilding. Uh, and I think that it is going to be a healthy breath of fresh air to this side of town. Big time. And it's something to look forward to. It's something to know that, again, we can give that same type of customer experience, not only at the Mishawaka location, now with service centers. If you have a domestic vehicle, especially a Chevrolet, be able to bring it over here and get served by, serviced by our ASC master technicians. Be able to have somebody that's knowledgeable with our sales professionals that know our Chevy product to come in. And if you have questions on your new vehicle or questions on an old vehicle, come in and be able to be helped. Same thing when it goes to the finance department or anything within the dealership. We want to be that one-stop shop. So that's the best thing about having it here on the south side of town is knowing that we're able to do that and just another staple within the community that we get to be a part of. Yeah, so especially in this community, there's been a huge push for us to go to the customer in a positive way. We know that we have the best prices, the best selection, and we bring trust to this community. And that's what we've done in the last, let's say, eight, nine years. If you go back to 2012, we had two stores. We had South Bend Toyota and then Chevy and, Chevy and Mishawaka. Since then, we opened up a Granger store. We opened up an Elkhart store. And now we're bringing Chevrolet back to South Bend, which is so great to see. We're bringing us to the customer so it's more convenient and it's more easy for them. And that's just really great to see because we're growing in such a positive direction because we're such a positive influence in the community and we're good for the customer. Exactly. And that's, that's the beauty of it, right? With growing, and you said it, you hit it on the head, is that, on the head is that we're growing. Right? Yeah. And over the last two or three years, a lot of places is downsized. Well, the one thing about Gates is they are growing, and that just goes to show you that we're, we're here to stay and we're here to do something for our community and be there for them. It's given them, again, that one-stop shop to knowing that you can come in. The best thing, one of the best things about the Gates organization is over the last two and a half years when COVID happened, they retained every employee where a lot of places downsized. A lot of places closed their doors. Exactly. Gates actually is in the process of opening more doors. We open our Elkhart location in the midst of that, which is one of the best used car locations in that area, and it's only growing. And it's able to give that type of Gates experience to that type of community out there, and we want to do that for the south side of South Bend too. That's right. We want to bring these positive experiences to them, and that's what we're doing with this new south side store for Chevy. It, it's just really cool to see that, especially knowing that this brings so many more opportunities for people in our community for yeah. job creation to find something that can become a career. And a lot of people think that, uh, you said it earlier, there's such a negative stigma attached to car salesmen, to dealers in general. And it's because so many people do it bad. They do it wrong. They do it the wrong way and teach the people the wrong thing. 
And that's what Gates has done so differently is they show them how great it can be to take care of people and how they can make that a career of a rewarding career long term where they're taking care of customers that come back to them time and time again. It's really great to see that. Uh, Now, the South Bend community is pretty important to you. Obviously, you grew up in South Bend. Uh, Let's talk about your history in South Bend. So you spent time on the west side. That's where I think that's where you grew up, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've got a lot of people you have connections with uh, in the community itself. Uh, you said your kids, um, the, I think you said your son is about hopefully going to go to St. Joe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Where's he at now? Uh, right now, he goes to Holy Cross. Holy Cross. Cool. Yeah, which is in South Bend, uh, on the north side of South Bend. Uh, and it's, being a part of this community growing up here is one of the best things that I've ever got to experience. And it isn't coming from a kid that just grew up here. It's seeing something bigger for this town, seeing something bigger for our community. And Gates has helped me see that, knowing that this is family-owned and operating, built here locally over 90 years. Being a part of the community, that's something that I want to do and I want to give it back. Uh, growing up on the west side of South Bend, I mean, just the community alone, the South Bend community, it's a great place. And a lot of times it gets a, a negative, uh, negative outlook. And there's a lot sure. of good things that come from South Bend. There's a lot of good things that happen in South Bend that we, there are overlooked. There's a lot of small communities out there that we don't dive into. And that's one thing that I can say that I'm grateful for that Gates has been a part of helping me bring to this side of the side of the table. Yeah. Uh, from the Mexican community there, the uh, Mexican soccer league. I mean, we sponsored a few teams there. That's right. That, that was amazing. I mean, small things like that, which seem small mean the most to a community yeah, exactly. There's small things that we do that have such a huge impact in this community. And if you were to, let's segue to some finance things. So if you were to give someone some advice when they're looking to finance their first car and they don't have the best credit, how do they overcome that? Maybe they can't buy today, but what can they do in the next six to 12 months so that they're in a great situation so they can finance a car? Well, there's a few different things. So a lot of times banks look at three things. They look at the stability of your income, overall your job, how long you've been there, what you're doing, what kind of money you make. Second is your credit profile. And third is cash, cash investment, how much money you're looking to put down and what kind of equity position the bank wants to be in. Well, two of those things that you can't control is where you work and how long you've been there. True. Now, if you've been on your job for quite some time, that's always a plus, And that's a great thing. Second is your credit, which we're talking about here. And third is the amount of money that you can put towards it or equity, whether that's in trade or money. Now, going back to credit, it just depends on your situation. If it's something that what we like to do is dive in and create a game plan to figure out what you want to accomplish. Again, is understanding your customer because there's ways to get a vehicle regardless of your situation. And there's ways to rebuild, rebuild your situation or your credit profile to help you. It just depends on what you want to accomplish. Now, we can set out a game plan that we can say, hey, if we pay off a few of your debts or pay down a few of your credit cards, we can put you in a situation in 90 days, you'll be here. Or if the immediate need is a vehicle right now, then we work on that third thing, which is the cash down. Yeah. As long as you have income that will support you and the type of vehicle that you're trying to get, we're able to help you in some way. So it isn't necessarily uh, if you can't get a vehicle, it's how you get a vehicle. And that's the best thing about being a business manager, being the director at Gates, is that we're able to help you figure out whatever your immediate needs are and also set up a game plan for you going forward. Yeah, and that's great is that we help coach these people. So not only are they making a good decision today, but it's, it's still a good decision in 90 days, in yeah. six months, in a year. So that way when it does come time to get out of that vehicle or do something else or buy that vehicle, then they're in a good situation. Uh, that's, that's what I love about when we slow down that process is that we can figure out really where they're at and help them get to that next step. And not everybody's going to be perfect credit. Yes, sir. And some people need help getting there, and that's how we're able to help them. And that's, and that's the thing where the misconception comes in and why a lot of times the car dealerships get the bad name because at the end of the day, those are people. And that's those right. are the people that we help. When we uplift that, everything else rises. And, and that's where I like to put most of my focus is helping those people get in situations that step in stone it's a, it's a stepping stone. It helps them put themselves in a situation that this is your, your, your last car. This is your next car to your next car. Yeah. It helps you build up to where you want to go. And as long as you do these things, and again, I'm not a financial advisor by any means, but I do care. 
I do want to set you up on a plan because this isn't the last car that I want you to buy from us. This is the first car that I want you to buy. Yeah. And that's, that's how we approach everything within the business department. Exactly. Especially with the long-term side of it, we want them to come back and we want them to have a great experience. And one other thing we do is we want them to put down money so they're immediately in a positive equity situation. There's just a lot of things that we do so that we want them to be in the best situation possible. Correct. We recommend, we recommend that. Uh, it's always recommended to be in the best equity position. But again, life happens. Yeah. Right? We live in a world where there's a lot of different things that go on. And, and the one thing I don't want is, to, is for people to think that that's what's needed. Because there's an option for everybody. We just have to figure out what the best option is for you. Again, that's the, I harp on that only because it is tailored to whatever your situation is. Uh, the ideal situation for us at our bank is for you to come in and put 20% down, finance at the shortest term, which is 36 months or shorter, and take the highest payment and pay it off as fast as you can. Yeah, but it's not financially possible for most people. Exactly. And that's why we have other options. Uh, so most times, banks will want you to put down 20% and do such a short term so that it's paid off quicker, and then that way they're in a positive situation. But that's not financially possible for some people. And it isn't for a lot of people, but that's okay. And, and again, yeah. that's, the, that's the stigma that I want to remove from buying a car from a big-name dealership or a franchise dealership is that that's what's needed because it's not. What's needed is an understanding of what it takes for you to be in the best situation for yourself and for you to find a vehicle that fits and, and works for you and the best, the best financing options if that's what you want to do. So, Mike, I know we're not financial planners, and if people do want financial planning advice, they should go see someone that's certified in those specific things. But if they do want car advice on what their situation is and what we can do to help make that better, what kind of advice would you give people as far as trying to tailor a situation to them? You just want them to come in so we can at least look at everything and talk about it, right? Absolutely. If, if they were to come in and we were to sit down, we can figure out the best action plan for them to accomplish their goals. And again, everybody's goal is different. You're right. It's not cookie cutter. That's why it's so tailored and so personalized. And and that that's the best thing about having that personal touch of coming in and not being a computer that you can click on and hearing these things or actually having somebody that just does the same thing that just goes in and clicks on a computer and tells you yes or no. And you want to have somebody that actually will take the time to understand your situation to figure out the plan that helps you accomplish that goal. And that's, that's the best thing about being in the business office at Gates and, running that department and having a core group of guys that understand that as well, because the experience levels that we have uh, with the five different guys that we have in the department is, is amazing. And every single person has the same outlook on it. We all have the same common goal and that's to make sure they give the best customer experience every time that you come in. Yeah. It, it just keeps coming back to putting that customer first and finding what the right solution is for them. That's what I like about everything that we do is it's always about the customer first. And even with our employees, we've had huge uh, growing opportunities, too. I know at Chevy World, we have had a couple new people that have stepped into some roles, but it's because we're promoting, and that's something we've always done. And that touched back to everything that we talked about earlier, the workshops, different opportunities. Yeah. What, what, what it is coming into this business is that there is a seat for everybody depending on what you want. The only thing that it requires is uh, having a good work ethic, having a good moral compass, and understanding what the vision is of the Gates organization and using it and making sure we're implemented with our customers because, again, they are first. And making sure we do give them that experience and make sure that you are somebody that they can call on. Exactly. So you are reliable and you do answer your phone when they need you. Yes, sir. That way you're there for them. It just makes a huge difference. Now let's talk about Gates for a second. Gates has been here for 90 years and we've got several locations what is it about Gates that makes us different than other dealers? What makes us different than our competition in town? Well, what makes us different is the process. We haven't got away from our roots, and they're organic. And the roots is that we come in and we make sure we, we sit down and we do uh, what's called a customer needs analysis. We want to sit down and get to know you first. We don't want to just show you a car. We don't want to come in and just pick one out, walk you to the car, show you the keys. We don't actually want to get to know you, your family, find out what you do, what you're about, where you're from, who you are. And, and that's one of the biggest things is that we're a staple in the community and we like to be that. But we also want to be people. We want to treat people like people. You want to come in and have in a professional environment. You want to come in and see people that will be here not only today, but five years from now and 10 years from now. That, that's one of the biggest things that separates Gates from everywhere else is that we take a lot of pride in our organic roots. And we want to make sure we keep that authentic. It's the, 
uh, it's hard to explain, but it's the equivalent to the secret sauce in Coke. Nobody knows what makes it so good, <laughs> but in the same sense, <laughs> but too, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's the secret sauce that stayed the same, and that's the one thing about this business and with Gates that has remained that way. And it's not a big secret. It's just making sure you stay to those organic roots. We're not redefining the system. We're not remaking the wheel. We know what works, and that's taking care of people. It's being good people, having good ethic, truthful, honest, and making sure we're being fair and friendly always. And that's been the mantra as far as as long as I've been here, and I'd imagine that will be the mantra when I'm way gone. And that's what makes us a lot different than everybody else because we actually really do care. And it's not like some big secret. It's just take care of your customers and put them first and go above and beyond of what they're looking for. Yeah. That way they know where to go. They know who to rely on. And that's what makes us a staple, like you said, in the community. Yes, sir. Yeah, isn't that great? It's awesome. And seeing a lot of different things, you know a lot of people in the business. And one thing that you hear is the Gates way. And it's really been a framework for a lot of other places. But there's the experience itself is something that you have to come in and understand. It's having those customers that come in. And again, it isn't whether you don't have to just come in for to buy a car or for service. There's people that come in that to get a bag of popcorn. That's right. There's people that come in to hang out and say hello. Uh, there's a gentleman. I mean, once a month, he brings flowers to our every receptionist. How cool. So it's just the community that we built within our community to let people be, I guess, not even a community, it's community center within our community to allow people to come in and enjoy themselves and take advantage, take advantage of our amenities that we have. And that's just because the name we've built for ourselves. People know that they can come to us and we will take care of them. And beyond that, they're comfortable with us. They know what they're going to, what they're going to get when they walk in the door. Yeah. And they're just doing an awesome job at that. And the owners have done a good job at continuing to pave that way to take things to the next level and make it go further. Our management has done a great job, and it just comes down to pouring into people. What would you say if you talked to a salesperson that was starting at Gates today, what kind of advice would you give them about the opportunity that's ahead of them? The advice I would give a, a new sales professional, and we give it often, is from my point of view, is to educate, educate yourself on the business. Make sure you understand what the bones are of the business. Make sure that you take care of people and they take care of you. But you do that by having a good work ethic, having a good understanding of the business, being knowledgeable, being truthful and honest, and making sure that your intentions are always good. Right? Too often, car, car people get a bad rep because it seems like we have bad intentions or we only care about ourselves. Yeah. And, that, and that's not the case. When you actually take time to get to know somebody that's something that on a consumer side is an unknown thing it's almost shocking when it happens when you actually take the time to care about somebody and take the time to know what they want and what they're looking for they're almost surprised a lot of times when you actually do that and for a new car person i think that if you can find a way to stay in that all the time you'll have a lot of success in this business that's great. That's great advice for or almost anybody is really understand what you're doing and why you do it. And maybe even take it a step further, find that why to find out why it's important and uh, whether it's your own success or important to your family. There's just a lot of cool things there. What would you say if someone is shopping for a car and they come to Gates, what will they experience when they come to us? You'll experience a easy, comfortable situation. Your buying experience will be relaxed. You'll get to be yourself. It's not a high-pressure sales tactic. Uh, it's to come in and be heard, be listened to, That's be right. guided. Right when you when you go somewhere. Uh, a professional establishment to be guided by somebody that's knowledgeable that can actually help you and give you what you're looking for. But in the same sense too, maybe show you that show you something that you didn't even know. And that's the one thing when you come in the gates that you'll receive. And knowing that you'll have a place that's going to be here and will continue to be here going forward. And you're you're not a number, you're 
a customer. You're part of our family. You're part of our our community, and being able to come in and experience those things, knowing that you have somebody that there's accountability here. And when we talk about salesperson success, it's not like we're proud of the numbers they put up. It's we really understand that they're helping people, and we're helping those people succeed in their own lives. It's it's just really cool to think about that. And yeah. one thing that Glenn and I were talking about yesterday was last year he helped over 300 people the year before that he helped almost 300 the year before that he helped almost 300 that's almost a thousand people in the course of those three years it is and that's it's crazy to think about because those thousand people they will meet a thousand people in their life and if you can have a positive influence in their life and you teach them to do the same thing then you can touch a million people just like that and glenn was would have been able to do that in the last three years isn't that crazy to think about it's it's almost mind numbing to think about it because to understand what one and that's one man there's that's right 15 other sales professionals at one location yeah, just at the one <laughs> just, just at the one location and there's probably another 35 to 40 yeah but that being said for glenn himself to be able to give that type of experience who are we not to understand what he's doing the right way and it isn't just all new customers. These are repeat customers. And You're right. They are a lot of referrals. These are that ex same example in a micro version of it. Because out of those thousand customers, how many of them are referrals? That's right. A third? That being said, that means he's already given that experience, like you said, from the first, from three years ago when he almost sold 300 cars. They had such a good experience that they recommended people. They touched a thousand people, and then those people touched a thousand people. That's right. And now this man gets to be a part of that and gets to give the community or help the community experience his way of buying a car, the Gates way of buying a car. And again, it's in the numbers 352 cars, you said? Uh, 331. 331, yeah. excuse me. 331 yeah. cars this man has sold by giving that experience. And listening and understanding that I, I love that listening understanding putting them first I yes. love that and that's what's made him successful is he really sits down understands where they're at and tries to find their best solution for them absolutely so that they so that they love their car so that they love him so that they love gates that's why so many people in this community love coming to gates absolutely and that's the best thing and it's not just that one experience because there again are 15 other sales professionals just at that one location right. that our goal is to do the exact same thing but uh, one of the best things about gates is that it's a what considered a plug and play situation you're going to our our experiences are going to be framework the same regardless of who you who you deal with and that's the best thing about the business office too because that that's our goal sales managers our service department our body shop our goal is to give that customer that exact same experience and that's just a small version of it and to really understand because it is tailored to every single person and there is a lot of individuals within the company but our our common goals all the same exactly and that's taking care of the customer yes sir <laughs> how cool so we covered a lot of topics here we talked about um, some advice for people buying a car we talked about advice for people financing a car we also talked about gates as a whole uh, we talked about if you were working here, we talked about what customers expect. What I love about South Bend is the history that's been here because they have a lot of even old architecture and old buildings that are downtown that they've revitalized. And in a way, I think the community has done the same thing. Yeah. Even 80 years ago, obviously most of those people are not around anymore. And in a way, we've revitalized what it means to live in South Bend and what it means to live in this community. And what it means to care for your neighbor. And that, I, I think that's what happens a lot. It has happened a lot in South Bend. And it has. And that's, that's the beauty of it is seeing that. It's seeing these, uh, the never stop mentality, the never give up mentality, yeah. and actually not leaving something when most people think it's broke. It's staying through and seeing it through and fixing it and watching it rebuild itself. And that's what the community is here locally. I mean, depending, regardless of what side of town you're from or what side of town you go to, you can see the same thing everywhere. And that's one thing that makes South Bend different than most other places is just that homegrown fight and having those good foundations of bones because of what was here and knowing where we were and who we are and knowing that we'd never lost that. That's the beauty of it. I love that. And the values still exist. Yeah. And that's what's really drawn people and continue to help them grow in this community. Let's segue to your kids for a second. Okay. And 
so your daughter's selling Girl Scout cookies? She I is. saw that. She is. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> uh, pretty good. Uh, uh, I won't give away too much, but I'm, I'm hoping that she's going to be in first place here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sandbag those numbers till the end, right? Oh, we're, we'll do <laughs> yeah. what we have to do to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but she she's enjoying it. She's actually uh she's actually going to the Century Center at an RV show, and she's gonna she has a little pop up stand there. That That's great. She's gonna go and sell some cookies. <laughs> so she's enjoying it quite a bit. But uh, the dad in me makes sure wants to make sure she's number one. <laughs> Keyword is want. <laughs> <laughs> how do you teach her to be number one? And wh- how do you also teach her that the lesson behind that is it's not about the number. It's about knowing that you can set a goal and that you can meet that goal. How do you teach that to her? The biggest thing that I that I like to do is show her that just to strive for it and shoot for it. I'm okay if you fall short. Yeah. But I, I want your mindset, or I want her mindset to be on reaching that goal and knowing and having fun doing it. I want her to enjoy it. I want her to know the thrill of going out and, and doing those things. And just, again, building just that foundation and setting those goals and trying to accomplish it. it it's the effort. It isn't the goal itself. It's the effort that it takes to get there because that's the fun part. And it is awesome if you hit it. But the just setting that and attempting to do it and making sure you give it your all, that, that's the best thing to me. And watching I her love do that, that means the world to me. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Selling cars and selling Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> They're not the same thing. But there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah, I think it's about the people. And I think it's about being willing to go ask someone for their business and build the value in that about why it's important, not just – to buy cookies because cookies are good, but there's so many cool things that come from Girl Scout cookies too. What kind of uh, advice do you give her when she's going out to ask people to buy cook buy cookies from her? To be genuine and be yourself. That's one thing that she does well. She's very much a people person. That's she's cool. not she's not very shy, but uh, she is a person that she's very in tune with her feelings, and she wants to she wants to see that she likes to know that she's helping provide something and even as small as a girl scout cookie to see some somebody get happy that makes her happy so that's the the one thing that she she's doing very well is that she's understanding what it takes to provide a service and make people feel good about it and that makes her feel good in return that's true and the i guess the overlap here is with car sales and with cookies it's you're in the people business you're it taking care of business. people. Just like you said, she feels like she's providing something. Yeah, that is the people business. And she, lo- <laughs> she loves that. <laughs> and I love that about her. <laughs> yeah. And you said she's good with people and she already loves that. Yeah. And maybe it's because she's been watching her dad. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so what's the secret? She's going to be walking through the Century Center. And how is she going to approach people? <laughs> well, the good thing is she's, she's eight years old and she's, she's a little cute. She's a little cute girl. So she's able to stand there with her pigtails and some stuff that is highly wanted by most people. And people wait all year to get a Girl Scout cookie. That's right. So they'll see her in her Girl Scout uniform and be able to say, hey, are you saying? And she'll be able to do that. But no secret, just going out and, go, and going after it and asking for the business. That's one thing, you know, is, is, is offering it, but make sure she asks for it as well. Ask for the business and make sure that, you know, you, you give a good explanation. Understand what she's selling. She knows uh how much they cost? She knows how to add them up, and <laughs> yeah. she knows how to she knows how to get it. So. <laughs> and she's good at math. She is good at math. <laughs> now, how old is she? She's eight. That's cool. Yeah. Has she done Girl Scout cookies before? Oh, this is her first year. Wow. Yeah, this is her first year. So she she loves it. She loves the camaraderie within it. She loves going on on you know her Girl Scout meetings and sitting there and talking about things and helping people because that's that's one thing that the Girl Scout the Girl Scouts really do is that they want to put people first too. They make sure that they're helpful and they're kind and they're sincere. And she absolutely loves that going there with her, uh, with her fellow Girl Scouts, I guess. I love that. Building things and, and, you know, creating crafts. She, she likes it a lot. Right. One of the things as people, we are drawn to other groups of people that are, are like us. And, and some people call that being tribal. Now, I'm not talking about the negative side of the tribal part, but on the positive side, there's just this draw for people to be a part of something so that they can help contribute as a group. And even talking about Girl Scouts and how we handle things with our sales staff and these workshops that we want to help other people succeed. And we want to help show them the way, not only just the way, but the right way to do things and the right way to help take care of people. And that's what we do in our workshops. Yeah. And huge, huge props to you for being a big part of that. Uh, shout out to Drew Dixon for yeah. being a part of that. And uh, Chris Emberton, shout out to him and all the other people that have poured into 
the sales staff every single Monday morning outside of business hours. <laughs> so that's the other cool thing is they're not even re- they're not required to be there, and it's outside of the hours, so it's an extra time commitment. And we we see that a lot as they people show up to be a part of that. And that's the beauty of it, and it's awesome. And I wish that uh, I'm glad that I'm able to be a part of it. The credit does go to Drew. That's something that he built. And I remember him having the conversation about him starting it. And and it was one or two people at the very beginning. And I used to, you know, seeing him go and the passion that he had behind it, it made me want to be a part of it. It made me say, you know, why aren't I getting up and going? That extra hour, hour and a half of commitment to go and maybe change somebody's career, maybe help put somebody in a situation that they're getting something they didn't have before. I love that. And just to start the week off the right way. Yeah. Every Monday you go there and you get to be a part of something and, and a bunch of like-minded individuals, like you said, that go around and sit and just go through the highs and the lows of the business and work through it with people that understand it. That's awesome. I, I would tell Drew all the time, you build, they'll come. And to see where it is now, we went from having four or five guys here to filling up an entire room, having 25, 30, almost not enough chairs. There is no space in that yeah. room on some Monday mornings. <laughs> this is true. And, and that's, the, that's the beauty of it, is to see these people come in and get something from it, and they want more. And they're coming back because they're not obligated to come. But to come and want to do better and be better, it's, it's funny because we had a, a, in this morning's meeting, one, one thing that we talked about, there, there's been this challenge going around on social media about a 10-year challenge. To post a picture of yourself <laughs> yeah. 10 years ago to where you are today. Some people love it, some people hate yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of differences, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, whether you're taller, higher, shorter, rounder, <laughs> whatever it is. There's, there's a bunch of that. <laughs> but my, my challenge to everybody was to think about where they were 10 years ago to where they are today. You know, I know we're talking about this guy a lot, but talk about Glenn. I, right. I asked him a question. 10 years ago, he was working in a factory putting molding on doors. That's right. Today, he's running a successful business selling 300 plus cars a year. That's the type of opportunities that we have in this business for anybody that's new that take advantage of. 10 years ago, I was a sales professional. Fast forward, I get to be a part of running one of the biggest finance departments in the area. So that's the beauty of it. If you put that work in, and it's that unseen work that we talked about, it's the going in early, it's the staying late, it's the helping the people for no other reason because you care and you want to help them. And that's exactly what we do with our customers too. I love that 10-year challenge (laughs) as far as what we just talked about. And to think that 10 years ago, I look back to where I was 10 years ago and I say two things. I say, wow, that was a long time ago. And that was not that long ago. It wasn't. (laughs) And looking forward to 10 years, being a forward thinker is where, where are we going to be in 10 years? That's personally company, Mike Clark, Jordan, we don't know what that's going to look like. And the nice thing is we might not know what it looks like, but we get to decide every day what that is. And that's the key that you said it best is Knowing what you know today, and again, you can look back 10 years ago and say, wow, that's a long time ago. And where was I? And look where I am today. You know, you've brought, you've been a part of bringing this company in, into the future. And so, you know, doing things like this, that's amazing. 10 years from now, where are you going to be? Because I'm sure this isn't the same, this isn't the end game. I'm sure there's going right. to be more and there's going to be growth because that's the type of environment that you're in. Being able to be a part of Gates, that's the type of environment that Gates brings to this community. And it's the same thing with our customers, and that's all that we ask for, is that you come in today and you help us help help you. And in 10 years from now, let's see where we are. And there's a lot of shorter increments in between that, but those those are the things that we care about the most because it's the macro of it. It's the big picture. We want to make sure that 10 years from now and 20 years from now and 30 years from now, we're still able to do the same thing. And that's help our people. That's right. And help this community. Yes, sir. Man, I love that. It's your, uh, I'm probably going to botch this quote, so please correct me if I do it wrong. Someone once said, thoughts turn into actions. Actions turn into habits. Your habits turn into your future. And what we do every day, coming in early, staying late, helping as many people as possible, working through your lunch with someone. People could easily... Salespeople could easily stop what they're doing and take a long break. Yep. They're allowed to do that, but they don't because they want to put that customer first and they want to make that happen for them. 
because it's it sounds silly, but we are changing people's lives. We are. They're coming in expecting one thing, and we give them above and beyond an awesome experience to really understand where they're at. We meet them where they're at. We help them find what they're looking for, and we put them in a better situation than what they could ever be in anywhere else, and we do it with a smile on our face. That's the key. We want them to go home smiling so they talk about us. It's to, it's to do it and feel good about it every single day. So do it and know when you go home. And again, I, and, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart is that being a part of this business, the best feeling isn't why I'm here. It's why I'm outside of here and somebody comes up and shakes my hand and they recognize me and I recognize them. It's not even that they recognize me. I, I, I get to know these people. I get to have a personal relationship with them uh, more than professionally saying hello and get to meet them. I watch their kids grow up. You know, selling a car to a family, starting off young, and fast forward 10 years, and now I get to help them finance a new car for their son that just turned 18. That's an amazing experience How that cool. you have to be a part of to understand. And again, that, that's the changing people's lives, as you said, is being a part of that, knowing that you have somebody within the community that you can go to for those things. That's awesome. Well, Mike, what I'd like to do is draw this episode to a close. And I guess in conclusion, do you want to give anybody a shout out? Do you want to say thank you to anybody? Uh, maybe someone that's listening to this or maybe someone in the community that has really helped you get to where you're at? Really all of the above. I mean, I want to shout out first and foremost to my family. I appreciate them a lot. Shout out to Mike's uh, family. Uh, the organization, my friendships uh, that I've built within here. More than that, just creating a family. Uh, the Gates organization has done a lot. And you said changing people's life. They've helped me do that. Um, shout out to Brian Winston. Shout out to uh, Brian Winston. Glenn. Shout out to Glenn. Uh, Drew Dixon. Shout and out the to the whole Drew. Chevy crew. And shout out to my finance team. <laughs> shout out to Chevy. Awesome. Shout out to the team. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be here without my my Chevy finance team with Lucas, Greg. Shout out to Lucas. Jeff, shout out to Greg. Shout Terrell, out to Jeff. Yeah. Shout out to and, Terrell. Uh, Eric. And so shout those, out to uh, shout out to Eric. <laughs> those, those guys. Those guys are awesome, and I appreciate them even taking the time right now to be able to come and do this. Uh, and the entire Chevy Finance team in our store, and really the community. Um, again, I, that's what I do it for, and that's the awesome part about it. So, Mike, I love that about you. You're just so you know that it takes so many people to make stuff happen, and you know that you're willing to help support your team to help the whole team succeed. I love that about you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on today. Can we do this again sometime? I hope so. Soon. <laughs> cool. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode for Car Talk, where we talk about everything car related, from buying, selling financing, and servicing. Thanks, Mike, for being on today's episode. We look forward to doing this again. Thanks for listening.